Tunisian President Joko Widodo says that he wants innovative ministers in his cabinet for his second term to help push forward his reform agenda. Mr. Widodo was expected to announce new cabinet, his new cabinet lineup today, but that seems to have been delayed to later this week. And several potential candidates visited the palace this morning, and among them were Nadim Makarim, CEO and co-founder of ride-hailing firm Gojek. The 35-year-old said that he has stepped down from his company after being invited to join the president's cabinet. And we're joined now by Dr. J.C. Siman Juntak, and she's an associate fellow at the ISIS Yusuf Ishak Institute here in Singapore. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Thank we'll you. get to the Gojek founder in just a moment, but another name that caught our attention, Prabowo Subianto, mm. very familiar to all of us mm. who are following the elections, so mm. Mr. Widodo's bitter rival. Mm. What do you make of his name being potentially tapped to join the cabinet? Yeah, this is very interesting because uh, this morning, as you know, the president summoned uh, some people mm. to the palace to talk about uh, his uh, idea, this, his developmental goal for the next five years. And Prabowo is one of those uh, people, right? So as we know, uh, the last election, 2019 was the most uh, divisive election in mm. Indonesia's electoral history, which led to a deep polarization uh, among the people. Until now, I think there's a lot of Indonesians that have not been able to move on from the election uh, situation. Right? And we also uh, uh, know that uh, Prabowo has, uh, and his party and uh, PKS, uh, have been benefited from identity politics, also mm. Islamist sentiments. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of concern uh, as to whether uh, Mr. Prabowo can actually wholeheartedly assist the president in the next five years. And secondly, also, what would be um, uh, the reaction of the uh, original uh, members of the government coalition? You know, all these nine um, parties that have uh, spent energy and resources in order to make sure that the president won. Uh, as well as, you know, democratically speaking, um, the, the oppositional, uh, the, the, the significant opposition uh, shrinkage, you know, the shrinkage of opposition camp is not uh, very good for good governance because then uh, it impedes the checks and balances uh, mechanism in the uh, democracy. And uh, also, uh, Prabowo has said that he was asked to help the president in the defense sector which led to the speculations that uh, he is asked to be Minister of Defense, right? So there's another concern there. I mean, we know his stance, you know, politically and also his preference for a, a strong state. So whether, uh, will his joining the government as Defense Minister uh, mean uh, that, he, that he will return the notorious dual function of the military, you know, in which the military will, active military uh, officers will take uh, political and bureaucratic positions uh, as in the new order era. So that's also the concern that, uh, you know, uh, uh rise because of this. Yeah, so that was Prabowo Subianto. But another mm -hmm. name that came up mm -hmm. today, as we were mentioning earlier, is Gojek um, yes. co-founder, mm -hmm. Nadim. So what do you, how significant is his introduction to this cabinet? What do you make of it? Yeah, Nadim is a very successful uh, entrepreneur, right? Nadim Makarim. He's young, 35 years old. And uh, Gojek, uh, as we know, is one of the most successful uh, companies in Indonesia. Uh, established 10 years ago and now valued at around 10 billion dollars right so i think with these successes i think the president uh, consider him as uh, you know a person that can help him realize his goals uh, i think um, i think it is rightly so eh, because he has already uh, proven uh, his capability his capacity in the digital and um, creative economy. Mm -hmm. I think in addition to him, there's also other, you know, names, young uh, mm -hmm. people like Vishnu Tama, there's also Eric Tohir, who's, who was uh, the chairman of the um, national campaign team for Jokowi's camp. So I think uh, there's going to be new names here, uh, new uh, interesting young uh, uh, people that uh, perhaps are going to join uh, the, the cabinet. Yeah, it sounds like a, an exciting time, perhaps, mm. uh, going forward. Tell mm. us then, Mr. Widodo's promise to put Indonesia back on track mm. uh, to become a $7 trillion economy by 2045. Mm. That certainly doesn't lack ambition. Uh, what, do, what do you think about uh, that as being a possible or a, a realistic target? Oh, that, that will be in 2025, right? So it's a centenary mm. uh, goal for Indonesia. So obviously, this, not this cabinet that is going to realize that aim, right? So uh, what, what the president is doing at the moment is uh, laying a good foundation for that aim to be achieved. 
So I think uh, he has, uh, in his first speech as a newly inaugurated president yesterday, he mentioned these five uh, policy areas, right? Uh, the uh, human de resource development, also the infrastructure continuation, uh, c continuation in infrastructure development, uh, as well as, uh, you know, transforming the economy from uh, relying on extractive uh, economy or, or, or natural resources into a modern kind of manufacturing service sector. So I think, you know, the president is trying to, to you know, move forward to, to, to realize this goal. And I think uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good ambition, although it is a bit kind of... <laughs> Ambitious. <laughs> okay, it is a good ambition. You mm. said that it won't be his cabinet that will be doing mm. this. It will be the next generation. So mm. these are the younger, the younger ones that yes. will be moving forward. How do you see that population or the government leveraging on its young labor force mm. to actually achieve its you know, economic goals? Because you know, we're starting to see you know, Gojek, 35-year-old. Yeah. You mentioned that a lot of the young ones are also coming into mm. cabinet now. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think it's one of the policy areas that the president re reiterated yesterday. It was on um, Simplifying the regulation and then he's going to introduce these two very important laws. The first one is on creating jobs and the second one is to empower small and medium sizes enterprises. So I think this is part of, you know, he's trying to tap on the, you know, the, the, the resource that Indonesia has, which is youth, right? So and also um, in terms of social welfare uh, policy, one of uh, Jokowi's uh, promise in the campaign is to also um, uh, provide a free training for those people who are not employed yet. So these people are going to be trained to prepare themselves for uh, employment. In the Mm -hmm. so, no, I was going to say, so definitely, you know, he is laying the path ahead mm -hmm. for the next mm -hmm. generation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in and speaking to us. We're just going to have thank to, you. in this instance, really wait and see what his, uh, who's yeah. going to be in his cabinet a lineup. Yeah. But thank you for coming in and speaking to us. We've been speaking with Dr. Desi Simon Juntak, the Associate Fellow at the ISIS Yusuf Ishak Institute.